I make a lot of charcoal, I, I figure I make about three quarters of a ton of charcoal every year. I've been doing that for 20 some years, so you can figure I've tried to, about every way to make charcoal. I make about half of it in a retort, and I make uh, about half of it in a simple barrel kiln. And it's such a simple thing, and I've got it tuned in so it's very productive and really, most importantly, really clean. We simply need a good 55 gallon drum with a tight fitting lid. And we need to put some air inlets in the bottom. Now you could just cut little three quarter inch holes all the way around the bottom. We need to be able to seal it up when we're done. So you could just seal it up with mud and stuff, but I prefer to make something a little more positive because it's hard to really get it sealed up well with the mud. So I simply have taken some three quarter pipe nipples and cut them on an angle and cut a hole and then welded them around the hole. So I can close these vents off at any time. I've tried lots of different numbers and sizes, and I think kind of the best is uh, eight equidistant three quarter inch holes. They're on an angle, not for any purpose other than that you can see in there and see if you've got uh, hot coals at the vent. So just pile up wood in here, light it on the top, and burn it till it gets to the bottom, and you will end up with charcoal but you'll get some loss and you'll have lots and lots of very acrid smoke. So I have many different designs of afterburners on the lid that reburns the gases that are coming off the charcoaling wood. This is the best one and the simplest one. I just need two three quarter inch bars or five eighths bars. Actually looks like I got one of each. That will give air space at the bottom of this burner and then this is a the bottom third of another barrel with a bunch of holes around the top edge and a big what six inch hole at the top and that will sit here and with that the air inlets here and here will burn all those gases and with a little luck it'll be almost no smoke. It's rather windy today which is not optimal but that's uh, I think it'll still do fine. The windy days simply make it burn a little less evenly and it could blow out the flame every once in a while make it a little smokier but we'll see how it goes. I think what we'll do is go ahead and fill this thing up and light it and then we'll talk about the theory of it and how and why it works. Let's cut some wood. Today we're using some oak boards from a fence and neighbor tore down. Scrap lumber is kind of perfect for this process. I'll also sometimes use uh, branch wood from when I'm cutting my firewood, anything from say three quarter inch diameter up to two inches. And if you need to make it out of fire sized wood, the easiest way is to cut thin wafers two inches thick and, and bust them up with a hatchet into a small appropriate size. And after we get it going good, we'll just put the lid on. And what this lid will do is give a chamber for all the smoke that's being formed from the charcoaling to reburn and see it's nice and clean now. It also will protect the top of the fire from air flowing over and 
burning your charcoal all the way to the ash because we got a convection coming up the whole way. So that's it, probably four, five, six hours, depending on wind and wood, it will be ready. We'll just come back and check it every half hour or so. So now why don't we go into the shop and talk about how and why this works. So the way this works is the way all traditional charcoal clamps work to make good, strong charcoal for uh, forging fuel and smelting fuel. In that, the, the secret to it is that the, the fire front is moving in the opposite direction of the air draft. So we're going to see if we can kind of demonstrate this with some shavings and a piece of pipe. We got this stuff, this thing full of fuel. If I light this at the bottom, so the, the air draft is going this way and the fire is also going this way. This will first burn to charcoal, but then it will be exposed to air and it will burn all the way to ash. and thus you will burn the thing all the way up. If we light the fuel on the top, the fire is traveling in the opposite direction of the air draft, the oxygen in the draft is consumed by the front of the fire as it goes down. So therefore it burns to charcoal, but now there's, it's starved for oxygen because all that oxygen's been consumed, so it stays charcoal and does not burn all the way to ash. And that's the same principle that large charcoal clamp worked in which you had a big conical heap of wood with a chimney in the middle. A lit in the middle with uh, vents at the perimeter and the, the fire would move out towards the perimeter. When it reached the perimeter, you close it all up and it was charcoal. So that is the basic principle is that the fire has to go opposite to the draft. Okay, now it's about 12.30. I think we started that at about 11. See where it's turning black? That's where the flame front is. That's where the rust is turning to magnetite. It has not reached any of the vents yet. See this? It's charcoaled. That's 500 degrees. That's over 500 degrees. Now watch as we go down. We're still up to here with charcoaled wood on top. And let's see what happens if I remove the afterburner, whether we get more smoke yet. With the lid off, we're getting a little more smoke, but you get also, this is all burning to ash. This is all being exposed to air that's blowing over the top. But whereas when we put the lid on, the air is being sucked in here and burning the gases and coming out here so there's not fresh air. That convection is protecting this surface to some extent from burning all the way to ash. So you can see that the fire has burned down to the vent on this one side. So now time to cap it.
So we have it burned down first on that side and it's charcoaled all the way to those vents. And now we have charcoaled wood down to about here. From here, about here on down is unburnt, it's un uncharcoaled wood over these four holes. But it's almost there, it's just gotta go a few more inches. See, most of the gases are coming from this side where they're still on charcoal wood. That side's mostly done, so there's very little coming out of there. Okay, looks like we're pretty much done. You can see there's no smoke whatsoever. I don't actually have coals at the vents. I've got four or five hundred degrees maybe this far above the vents. And now it's kind of just a judgment call. If I try to make sure I burn all the way down to these vents, meanwhile, I'm still losing material up here. Especially once you don't really see any smoke anymore, a lot of what's burning is now charcoal. I'm gonna to choose to close that off knowing that there'll be a few brands at the bottom. I can hear it burning from the bottom up. It's going So I, I think it's time, time to close. So you can see we've got charcoal and we're at about half of the volume of our original wood pile. And that's, that's about what you expect. So everything's sealed up. It should be stone cold in about an hour. All right, here we are the next morning. It's nice and cold. Let's see what we got. Nice, crispy charcoal. Looks good. I usually expect to get 25 pounds of charcoal out of this after breaking and sifting and the best I've ever gotten was 32 pounds. Just to review, we built a kiln with a easily sealed bottom. We burn from the top to the bottom. When the fire gets to the bottom, we close it up. That took about five and a half hours. And that's five and a half hours that are easy to be doing other work while you're waiting for it. And so we had a, an afterburner on the top, which burned the gases and made the whole process cleaner. So with this afterburner method, you're really not making much more smoke than you would running a wood stove. Nice oak boards from a fence a neighbor tore down. Um, scrap lumber is kind of perfect for this process. It's easy to chop to the appropriate length. You could also, I also often use like the branch wood from my firewoods, things, uh, any branches from say three quarter of an inch up to an uh, inch and a half or two inches. Um, if you have to make it out of Hang lumber on, size. We got to get rid of that rooster, it's really loud. <laughs> Yeah, there's no way to get rid of them. <laughs> Just gotta move him. Go on. Go on. It's just gonna make him louder. No, don't get it on that side. We're gonna chase him away. Go on. Get. Get. Get.
Okay. <laughs>